Welcome back to War Thunder Megley News. This week we get to see the much anticipated Leopard 2A5 on the dev server. So hit that subscribe button because this thing was a beast. Against the newly added mango shell for the Soviets, the Leo 2A5's turret was impenetrable from the front and the sides except for the very back where the ammo is stored. In fact, if I recall correctly, no shell was able to penetrate it. On top of that, the frontal hull armor was also extremely impressive. The upper front plate only having a very small weak area near the turret ring and the lower front plate only having a weak point at the very bottom which where rounds will typically skip the entirety of the tank without doing much damage. For having all this armor of course there's a negative side in which the tank is compared to many other top tier tanks much slower. I think I was able to bring up to about 35 kilometers an hour on roads in a test drive. However, in combat, the armor was so impressive that the lower speed didn't really matter. The vehicle felt like playing a top tier jumbo back when the jumbo was 4.7. One thing I forgot to check out was that the cheese wedges on the turret can be shot off, which will heavily reduce the amount of armor you have. And apparently they can be shot off rather easily. However, even without the cheese wedges, the tank did still have an impressive amount of armor, more so than the current Leo 2A4. This ludicrous amount of armor caused a lot of discussion among many War Thunder players. One side of things was that this is all historically accurate, and the other side saying even if this is historically accurate, the game is not ready for this. The M1A1 is not equal to this tank. The TU-80 is not equal to this tank. However, according to data miter Mike Tendee, the Leo 2A5's armor is bugged and is currently acting as solid blocks of rolled homogenous armor instead of a sandwich of composite. So don't get too hyped, don't get too scared. We gotta wait for the live server to really figure out how this tank is going to perform. In my last video, I talked about all the other tanks that are coming to this patch. So if you care about those, there will be a link in the corner. But something that was pointed out on the M1A1 was while the M1A1 is really just an M1IP with the 120mm cannon, the visual model of the composite armor in the X-ray view of the M1A1 was different than that of the M1IP. And despite having the same armor values as the regular M1, it was also different from the regular M1's composite armor model. This had led some to believe that the heavy armor modification that would add depleted uranium plates to the M1A1 was to be added as a modification later on. And if the current armor values of the Leo 2A5 happen to be final, the M1A1 would definitely need some depleted uranium plates to be anywhere near a worthy competitor. Now this brings up a bit of a question. Should the M1A1 HA be a modification or a whole new vehicle on its own? Personally, I feel it should be its own vehicle. However, there's some benefits to it only being a modification where you don't have to grind out a whole new vehicle to get it. Though, I say, if it is a whole new vehicle, now you have two M1A1s to take out. Something I totally did not forget to report on, the Italian M60 is going to be removed from the store. Reason for this is historically, it never had a stabilizer. But to remove the stabilizer from the vehicle, they would have to lower it to 7.7. .7. And they felt that altering the stats of the premium vehicle is unfair to the customers who bought it, regardless if it was ahistorical. And so, they're removing it from the store for now, and the tank will retain its 8.3 battle rating and stabilizer until they've decided what they want to do with the tank. A lot of people were saying that they should change it to be a M60 Rise, as Italy also use that vehicle and Gaijin already has the model of the M60 Rise in the US tree so it'd really just be a reskin and then perhaps you could have the regular M60 be a regular tech tree vehicle. However Gaijin was against this idea as giving it ERA and APFSDS to meet the ride's characteristics it would also have to go up in ranking from rank 5 to rank 6. Personally I feel they need to get over it and just make it a rank 6 but I also don't feel like my opinion should weigh too much on this because I am essentially a Gaijin shill. Not really. 
but Gaijin gives me free things. I could right now go and ask for the Italian M60 and they would most likely give it to me. So my opinion wouldn't necessarily be of one who paid for a vehicle. My feelings wouldn't match someone who is financially invested into the current state of this vehicle. Although someone who plays the game a lot and has actually put money into the game, I can say on the broad spectrum I want the game to be as historically accurate as possible. Hopefully this issue is resolved soon. On a final word about tanks, not necessarily related to patch 1.87, but in a bug report about many problems of the Challenger 1, one of the bug supporters asked the moderator, are we any closer to getting this to the devs? And the reply was, one has already been processed. The second one is in the works, but the other reports that I worked on have higher priority to the devs, but it does move forward. Yes. Which sounds very promising as the bug report this was asked on is quite in depth about the Challenger's armor, although I'm skeptical if we're going to see changes to the Challenger 1 anytime soon. For aircraft, nothing much has changed since the last dev server. However, drag chutes are now functioning on all the G91s, both the MiG-19s, the F-100, and the T-2K. For naval news, this is a little bit old, but the dev server hit, so I didn't really get to cover it, is there was files on the dev server, actually, for some rather large guns, typically attached to heavy cruisers. There was the turret 238mm SKC-28 triple, which can be found on many large vehicles, including the P-1000 Rat. However, this explicitly says triple, and those seem to only come on the Dutchland Heavy Cruiser, or Pocket Battleship, as the British like to refer to them as. And I really like that because they visualize pulling a battleship out of your pocket. Now the fun doesn't stop there, as there was also files for 200mm and 203mm Type 3 cannons. Typically Type refers to Japanese guns, and these guns appeared on a large number of vessels, I couldn't really run it down to a few, but they are heavy cruiser guns. There's also a file for a turret 28mm Chicago piano, which I gotta say, Chicago must have been a really lively place back in the 30s and 40s. Got various random hassled objects having guns named after them, like typewriters and pianos. There's also some naval themed profile icons, which look pretty great. The final major alteration is the update to Squadron Activity. In hopes to keep squad members more active, Gaijin is updating this Squadron Activity thing so that members of a squadron can receive those unique squadron only vehicles from last week by spending activity points on them, which you get one for every 200 RP you get through gameplay. They will be acquired once every three days and the maximum possible activity will be increased and it will also be limited to three days rather than 24. So you don't need to log in every day to acquire the maximum number of activity points. Because of this, I've been thinking about making my own squadron, but I'm not entirely sure if I want to because they haven't actually stated at how much activity you need to gather to research one of these vehicles. And you can also just buy these vehicles with the Golden Eagles. So I'm wondering, will the time investment, however long that be, be worth the money investment that would cost in Golden Eagles, which they also haven't stated what that is. However, they said that if you are in a larger squad, you will get more activity points. So if you are really interested in one of these vehicles, I would suggest joining one of the larger squadrons. Also, you can get them in a training squadron. So if you wanna just go to that on your own or with a few friends and don't want to invest the Golden Eagles into making your own squad, that option is open. Overall, it's an interesting way to get some other vehicles, not directly through the game. You don't need to be playing Russian boats to get the Russian boat. You could be playing top tier US tanks if you're into that. And they do have plans to have more squadron vehicles in the future. So I'll be putting a good amount of thinking into making my own squadron. Really the hard part is coming up with your own name. You gotta have something good, not too corny, and not too much of a joke, because you want people to take you seriously, but not too seriously, because then you're, you're corny. 
Also, been thinking maybe it should just go with something generic like 209 or 209th. But nothing's confirmed. I'm not entirely sure if I want to do that. Final news is as I was recording this, actually, the pre orders have gone up on the PlayStation Store. And on the PlayStation Store, you can't have pre orders up for more than two days. Which means within the next two days, 1.87 will drop. So let's get hyped. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button if you did like the video. Don't hit the like button if you didn't like the video. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more. I make news videos every Sunday. I make random videos throughout the week. And I like to stream on Saturdays. So hit the bell to be notified anytime I upload anything. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day. A little extra bonus news for you bonus news boys. The Alaska map has an immense amount of destructible buildings. Shooting heat or HE at multiple structures will collapse them. Sometimes actually just running around and shooting uh, twin 30s from the Tunguska will destroy buildings. But also you can shoot missiles or rockets or tank shells at the skyscrapers or high rises really. And they too are destructible, although it looks a little weird because you fire one missile at one level and it takes up like four stories and it's a little off. I wish Gaijin would like adjust that. I also kind of wish this whole sky kitver could like fall down and I don't know, maybe that'd be too much of a rearrangement of the map.